Hello and welcome to uh, another session of information retrieval. Uh, string handling is uh, central to uh, the problems in information retrieval. So let's see, uh, let's take some string handling problems and see how they are done. So today I'm particularly uh, or specifically focusing on uh, uh, one data structure which allows us to handle certain kinds of problems very well. So here is a problem. Uh, how can you find if a given string S is a substring of another string T? So let's say I have S as ego and T as category. Uh, S is a substring of uh, T. So we have ego in category. Uh, so how, how will you uh, find this? Well, uh, one way to do that is take each character and go character by character here uh, till you find uh, E. So when you reach to the first character E, then increment the pointer over here and see whether G matches with G and then uh, O matches with the next letter uh, here. So that's one way to do that, but is there a better way? So let's see. Here is another problem. How can you find the number of times S occurs in T? For example, A appears thrice in banana. How do you know? So if I give you any such string, how do you know how many times that string appears uh, in another string? Um, this is a slightly trickier problem compared to the last problem. Uh, take a moment, pause the video and think how would you do it? Here is another question. Is S a suffix of T? For example, DIA is a suffix of India. But how would you find this out? Okay. Usually, the student, uh, some students tell me, um, you take, you start with a pointer at the end, A, and uh, you start with the, uh, with another pointer in the string to be compared. So if this is S and uh, this is T, uh, so I have a pointer at the end of T, a pointer at the end of S, and see whether uh, they match. If they match, then we decrement both the pointers and see whether uh, the next two characters match. So if I is also match, then I decrease both and I keep going till I see that the entire S exists uh, as a suffix of T. Is there a better way to do this? Here is another question. Find the longest repeating substring of T. For example, geeks is the longest repeating substring in uh, T. So I have geeks repeating twice. But how do you know uh, or how, how would you, what would be your algorithm to find the longest repeating substring? One uh, way to start is probably uh, list or enumerate all repeating substrings and then find the longest amongst them. But then how would you find a substring which repeats? <laughs> Take a moment to pause the video and think uh, how would you do it or what's your algorithm uh, to achieve the same thing. Here is another question. Given two strings x and y, find the longest common substring of x and y. Uh, uh, so in this case, the longest, uh, not repeating, but longest common uh, substring of x and y is geeks. So we see that geeks is common to both x and y. So how would you implement this? What would be your algorithm to do this? These are indeed uh, tricky questions. Um, so let's see how uh, to solve all of them. So let me repeat, we have seen these questions. How can you find if a given string S is a substring of another string T? How can you find the number of times S occurs in T? Is S a suffix of T? Find the longest repeating substring of T. Given two strings x and y, find the longest common substrings of uh, substring of x and y. It turns out that for all these uh, 
problems. Uh, there is a nice data structure uh, which if you use your problem becomes very simple. The data structure is called suffix tree. Let me first explain what a suffix tree is and how to construct a suffix tree. Then I'll explain how the suffix tree can be used to answer all the questions that we have discussed so far. So let's assume a string S is given to us, which is A, B, double A, B, A, and we use a dollar as an end marker to note that uh, the string has ended. So we add a dollar to all the given strings. So once we have the string appended to a dollar, we are ready to construct a tree. So we take all the suffixes of this uh, string. So the, the first suffix is dollar. So we start constructing. So we create a root node and then we add dollar to it. And if uh, if this is an end, if this is the end of the string, I put a dark node here. So that's what is happening here. That's all I got this edge. The next substring is a dollar. So I go ahead and add so uh, a so a doesn't exist now. So I add another node. Let's call this edge as a. And after a is over, I have a dollar. It doesn't matter which way you draw the edge; it's all the same. And with this, the suffix ends. So we use a dot circle here. So I have a and dollar here. So we have seen two uh, suffixes, dollar and a dollar. Now let's take another suffix, b a dollar. Uh, so I have b a dollar. So this path. Yeah. Similarly, the next suffix is a b a dollar. So I have a b a dollar. This. And then I have double A, B, A dollar. So A, A, B, A dollar. So this is the path uh, that uh, we are talking about here. And then we have B, double A, B, A dollar. B, double A, B, A dollar. So that is this path. And then finally, we have A, B, double A, B, A dollar, which is the entire string with dollar. So we start with A, B, then double A and B A dollar. So we are talking about this path. So note that we have simply drawn all the suffixes as a tree. So this is what a suffix tree is. In simple words, take all suffixes and put them as a tree. Use a dark circle to denote that we are done or we are at the end of that particular suffix. And if there is something in common, we branch. Right? So for instance, uh, now we can say that uh, there is a suffix which starts with A uh, and goes on like this, and goes on like this, goes on like this, and goes on like this. So one, two, three, four. There are four paths, meaning there are four suffixes which start with A. So what are those four suffixes? I have A dollar or simply A and then I have A A B A and A B A and A B A A B A. Uh, so these are the four suffixes that start with A. All right. So now that we know how to construct a suffix tree, let's now uh, take the problems and try to address them using suffix tree. How can you find if a given tree S is a substring of another string T. So if I want to see whether ego exists in category, it is easy to observe that there must be some suffix which starts with ego. There must be some suffix which should start with ego. So all we have to do is go to our tree and see if we have a path which starts with ego. And if the path continues or it branches, we are good to say that uh, ego is a suffix or is a substring of T. So that was easy. Let's now look at the second uh, question. 
how can you find the number of times some string um, uh, yes you know how, how many number of times yes occurs in so let's take the example here uh, let's say we want to know how many times a uh, appears in this whole string right um, how would you do that using this suffix tree take a moment pause this video and think you must have observed that every a every occurrence of a must be a, uh, must be the first character of some suffix right so i have a dollar i have a b a dollar i have a b a a b a dollar and so on so this a here uh, so if i'm interested in finding out uh, how many times A occurs, all I have to find is how many branches I have in this tree. So since I have four, after this, I just count the dark circles. So there are four dark circles in the path that starts with A. So A appears four times. Let's try our luck with B. So if you look at B, so we are here. So we are done with processing the substring, which is B. And after B, how many dark circles do I see? Two dark circles. So that means there are two suffixes which start with B. So that is this, the suffix that starts with this B and the suffix that starts with this B. So there are two occurrences of B. Uh, I don't have to, I can do this or I can apply the same logic for substrings which are longer than one character. For example, how many times AB appears in this string? So there are two suffixes that start with AB. And this is clear from following A and B and you reach to this uh, node. From here, see how many dark circles can you see. So there is one here and one here. So that means AB appears twice in this string. So that addresses the second question as well. Now let's look at the third question. Is S a suffix of T? Well, this is perhaps the easiest of all. Uh, how would you know that uh, something is a suffix or not uh, for a given string? If it is a suffix, um, then that path should end with a dark circle in our suffix tree. So for A, B, A, for instance, A, B, A, it ends in a dark circle. A, because we append a dollar. So we find a b a dollar and it ends with a dark circle. So it is a suffix. That's the way we constructed the suffix tree. So it follows from there. Let's look at the next one. Find the longest repeating substring of t. How do you know that some substring of t is the longest repeating substring of t? Let me clear all these remarks. Okay. I'm interested in finding the longest repeating substring of t, of t. So if I draw a suffix tree for geeks for geeks, how do I know that geeks is the longest uh, uh, longest substring that repeats? Okay. So Again, pause the video and think if you need some time here. Let me now explain the answer. So there are, uh, so let's take one substring uh, and we are saying that that substring repeats. So that means there is more than one occurrence of that substring. Now, whenever there, for every occurrence of that substring, we have a suffix that starts with that substring. So that is quite clear. So there is a substring which starts with this geeks and there is a substring which starts with uh, this geeks. So this substring is the whole string itself. The next thing is um, when we are parsing the tree um, after this geeks s uh, the tree should branch and on one side it, this would end with a dollar and a dark circle and for another side another branch it will continue with four weeks i hope you can see this so let's take an example uh, here uh, 
what do you think is the longest repeating substring of this string? A, B, A. Okay. So let's take a look. So I have A, B, A. And this is the deepest I can go from where I branch. So there are two, sub, two suffixes which, have, which start with A, B, A. So the first suffix is ABA itself and the second suffix is ABA, ABA. So, so we have two occurrences. So it's clear from this that uh, we, are look, we are trying to go as deep as possible without branching. And then we want to see if we can find a branch. So whenever there is a branch, we know that it repeats once at least. And we know that all the the dark circles that we find here leads to the suffix. So there are two suffixes which start with A, B, A. Of course, there are suffixes that start with B, A as well, but this is not deep enough. This is much deeper than B, A by one more character. So, so we prefer or we report that the longest repeating substrate is A, B, A. Okay, so we have solved this as well. Now, here is a very tricky one. Given two substrings x and y, find the longest common substring of x and y. How would you do this? Let me leave this as a teaser for you to figure it out yourself. Um, if you have x's and if you have two strings x and y, um, you have to find the longest common substring of x and y. How would you do this? Let me give you the clue, give you one clue and let you figure it out how, uh, how to solve this problem. The clue is you can somehow concatenate X and Y together, then construct the suffix tree and then apply some kind of navigation uh, to answer this question. I'm sure you can do it by yourself. That's all I wanted to uh, discuss today. Um, this lecture's primary purpose was to illustrate the idea of data structures to you. Um, data structures is a lovely topic where we take several such related problems and ask ourselves, if you organize the data in a specific way, can I find elegant, beautiful, and efficient solutions uh, to those problems? So here, if you see, um, we try to come up with some chaotic ad hoc solutions initially. But when we see that we can organize data in a specific way, in this case, a tree of suffixes, automatically all these problems become trivial and the solution looks very elegant. I hope you enjoyed uh, this lecture. And if you do, please go ahead and study uh, data structures deeper. There are many such brilliant ideas in the subject of data structures, and I'm sure you will like all of them. Thank you.